Hello, it is December 26, 2023. I had laid down for a nap and uh, as it so often goes, you know, as I'm going in and out of the nap, the Lord's speaking to me and I'm engaging him. And so he was just releasing so much revelation. So um, I'm going to trust Holy Spirit to release what what he'd have me to release here. So, and I'm going to title it The Melchizedek Priesthood and the Reward of His Suffering, the Reward of the Lord's Suffering. Father, I just thank you for your great goodness, which you've laid up for us. I thank you for bringing us into the fullness of that. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your revelation, for leading us into all truth. And Jesus, thank you for paying the price to bring us in. For interceding on our behalf before the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. As I woke up, it was 12-12. <laughs> I'm like, okay, 12-12. Governmental perfection, 12 times 12, 144. 144,000, the Melchizedek priesthood. The first fruits, the man-child of Revelation chapter 12. The 144,000 in Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. 144 four, that follow the lamb follow the lamb wherever he goes I'm going to begin in Psalm chapter 50 an incredible psalm of David where it says the mighty God the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. This is the glory coming. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather my saints, that Hebrew word is not the Hebrew word kadosh, but it's the Hebrew word hasid, as related to hased, which means mercy. Hased is merciful or merciful ones. Gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. What is that covenant by sacrifice? It's those who will lay down their life to bear his image. Who will lay down their life to bear his image, to bring in the reward of his suffering. Back to verse 1, the mighty God, the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. What has he called the earth to from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same? This is a psalm of David, and this question is answered in David. Because it was a mandate, it was an edict by the Lord given to David. And so the answer is found in David, and we see it in Psalm 113. Psalm 113 is part of the great Hallel, the great praise, which is from Psalm 113 through Psalm 118, all Psalms of David. It's called the great Hallel, the great praise. It was sung during Passover. So Psalm 113, the first Psalm of the great Hallel says, 
Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord or the name of Yahweh is to be praised. So this answers our question, Psalm 50. From the rising of the sun until the going down the same. He says, The mighty God, the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down the same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. What has he called the earth to? To praise his name. Why? Why from the rising of the sun until the going down the same is his name to be praised? You know, in Kansas City, um, what do they call it, where they, they praise him 24 hours a day? I don't even remember it, Mike Bickle's ministry. And I read one thing one time that says, yeah, it's 24-hour worship pattern after the Tabernacle of David. No, no, that's not the Tabernacle of David. The Tabernacle of David is to praise the Lord from the rising of the sun until the going down the same. See, that edict... That mandate was given to David when he took the Ark of the Covenant to Zion and put it in the tabernacle of David. It was never 24-7. It was from the rising of the sun until the going down the same. Now, maybe they spoke to them to do 24-7, but that's not the tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of David is from the rising of the sun until the going down the same. Why? There's a very specific purpose why. Because from the rising of the sun until the going down the same is the time of the morning and the evening sacrifice of the lamb slain. In ancient Israel, there was a lamb slain in the morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice, a lamb was slain. From that same time that Jesus gave it up, said, into your hands I commit my spirit. From the time the sun was going down, about 3 p.m. How did he fulfill the morning sacrifice? Remember, they came and got him at the garden, and the religious leaders interrogated him. It was still dark. And Peter was there in the courtyard and denied him knowing him three times, and the cock crowed. When does the cock crow? When it's about, the sun's about to rise, or the sun is rising, it cocked three times. Because that was, see, this is the time of the morning sacrifice. Jesus was offering himself as the morning sacrifice. And what was going on? He was being interrogated by the religious leaders. He was being brutal, beaten, and pummeled, as they said, prophesy to us. For what purpose was he offering himself as the morning sacrifice? To redeem the priesthood, to, to, to pay the price for the religious nation of Israel. And then he was turned over to the Romans, to Pilate, ultimately, right? For what reason? To redeem the Gentiles. Rome representative of that superpower of the whole world. That he might reconcile both Jew and Gentiles into one new man, thus making peace through the cross. His word is so amazing. The mighty God, the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down of same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Who is this? This is the bride. This is those who have ascended Zion.
through faith, through laying down their lives in faith, to apprehend that which for they were apprehended. to follow the lamb wherever he goes. These are the merciful ones. Gather my merciful ones together. Just as Jesus performed the mercy and the shedding of his blood in first love laying down his life. The merciful ones will follow the lamb. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. The 144,000 will follow the lamb wherever he goes to bring him the reward of his suffering. Not only to bring in Jew and Gentile, but to bring, to restore all things. It says in Acts that he's sitting, the Lord is sitting at the right hand of the Father, waiting seating there until the restoration of all things. All things. It doesn't say the restoration of most things, some things. The restoration of all things. That may press us a little bit on our doctrine But Hebrews to, or Ephesians chapter 4 says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He that ascended in the heavens also descended in the lower parts of the earth. And he that descended ascended far above all heavens that he might fill some things, that he might fill all things. You cannot come face to face with Yahweh without coming face to face with all of his creation. I'll say it another way. You have not come face to face with Yahweh if you have not come face to face with all of his creation. For of him and through him and to him are some things, most things, are all things. This is a perspective that he must bring his remnant 144,000 Melchizedek priesthood into. This perspective, this is the perspective of the eagle, the face of the eagle that looks down from heaven from a heavenly perspective. I'm speaking of the four faces within the glory, the face of the ox, the face of the man, the face of the lion, the face of the eagle. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, We're to no longer know, we're no, no man after the flesh. For in Christ Jesus, for, um, for if any man is in Christ, it says he is a new creation. You know, that he is is not in the text, it's not in the King James, it's italicized. If any man is in Christ, a new creation. It's much bigger than you. It's not he is. It's a new creation. Can you, can you expand into seeing all things in him? You've come into the I am. Of him and through him and to him are all things. The restoration of all things. 
If any man is in Christ, he is. He is, is not there. If any man is in Christ, a new creation. The old has passed. Behold the new, the new creation in Christ Jesus. Jew and Gentile all being made one. All things in him. And look at the, look at the context of this, this, this verse. If any man is in Christ, a new creation. The old has passed. Behold the new. Don't behold the old. It's a lie. Why are we setting our, our attention on the old? Behold the new. That's the true. That's the real. That's his original purpose and creation. You cannot die to self by beholding the old, by always trying to fix the old carnal man. Reckon it dead by faith. No, behold the new. If any man is in Christ, a new creation, the old has passed. Behold the new. I think it goes on to say, he has committed unto us. Let me just turn there real quick so I get it right. 2 Corinthians 5. Behold, all things are become new, and all things, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech by us. We pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, it's, it's not if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Yes, that's true, but, but it's, it's, the, it's the bigger picture. Because the bigger picture is seeing all things in him. And that to us has been committed this ministry of reconciliation of all things. He's willing that none would perish, but that all would come to eternal life. If you turn to Romans chapter 11, I want to show you something here. This is incredible. The Holy Spirit was releasing. Um, Romans eleven twenty five. For I would not have you, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, unto the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant to them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as you in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy also they may obtain mercy. That through your mercy gather my merciful ones together unto me. 
those that have made a covenant with sacrifice. They lay down their life to bear his image, to bear the image of the Lamb. To bear that righteousness, this is who you are. Romans 11, verse 31. Verse 30. For as you in times past have not believed God yet, have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God has concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has first given unto him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are most things, are all things. For of him, and through him, and to him, are all things to whom be glory forever and ever. I beseech thee therefore, brethren, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies, the King James says, but it's compassions. I beseech you by the compassions of God that you offer your bad bodies, the merciful ones. Gather my merciful ones together unto me. Those who will lay down their life to bear my image I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, the, the compassions of God, that you offer your bodies, that through your mercy they may obtain mercy. Offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transfigured by the renewing of your mind, that you may come into the mind of Christ, the one new man, this new creation. That of him and through him and to him are all things. You cannot come face to face with God without coming face to face with all of his creation. You cannot say you love God, yet not love his whole creation. Because they are one. If we say we love God and love not our brother, it's a lie. Offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The NIV says spiritual act of worship. That's a good capturing of the thought there. True worship is offering yourself up on the altars. Worship always involves a sacrifice. As Exodus chapter 29 verse 37 says, Whatsoever touches the altar is made holy. Offer yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. What's the acceptable? What's acceptable? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. What's the acceptable? It's coming in his image. Restored back to his image through the finished work of Christ. That's the acceptable in the very image of his son. Holy and acceptable. Unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, to the mind of this world. But come into the one, the mind of the one new man. But of him and through him and to him are all things. One body, one spirit, just as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all.
living sacrifice, holy and acceptable in God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, transfigured, metamorpho. Be transfigured by the renewing of your mind. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, I think. The truth which is in Jesus. What is that truth which is in Jesus? It's the one new man. It's the new creation. The truth which is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation, the former conduct, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. This individual and come into the one new man. That was the fall when we came out of oneness and we came into this individualistic thinking of self. We came out of Yahweh. I am. I am. We come back into I am through the way, the truth, the life. I am the way, the way of righteousness, Yeshua, Jesus. I am the truth, Holy Spirit. I am the life, the Father. Coming back into Yahweh, I am. The truth which is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, or the former conduct, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful, the lying lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new man, the one new man, both Jew and Gentile, all and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness from the truth. Wherefore, putting away lying, the King James says, but the Greek literally reads, wherefore, putting away the lie of the old man, this individualistic old man thinking of self. Wherefore, putting away the lie, speak truth one to another. For we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. This is what Paul is calling us into Ephesians chapter 4. This is what Jesus was saying when he's saying, come unto me, come out of the Mosaic law, come into this new law of the Melchizedek priesthood. Where we, where, we'll, where we will restore all things. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden under the law. Of Mosaic, the law of condemnation, the law of sin and death. Come, being there a change of the priesthood, there is also a necessity of the change of the law. Come unto me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest in my finished work. Where I led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Where I descended in the lowest parts of the earth and ascended far above all heavens that I might fill all things. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest in my finished work. Sit in heavenly places. See from that perspective. Look down. As it says in Psalm 85, righteousness shall look down from heaven. That's from seated in heavenly places. That's from seated on the merciful seat, the merciful seat, the merciful ones that have this perspective. They don't have this micro perspective, but they have a macro perspective. They see the bigger picture. 
You cannot come to face to face without him without coming face to face with his whole creation. That's why we're to love our enemies as ourselves because they are part of him. He made all things and without him was not anything made that was made Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come back in. Join to me. Come into the mind of Christ. Come into the new creation. Come into I am. All who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you'll find rest for your souls. There remains a rest to the people of God. Let us be diligent to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. How do we enter into this rest? By believing. (laughs) By believing in the finished work. Take my yoke upon you. Not the yoke of the law, of Moses' law, that brought you in bondage to sin, the law of sin and death, the law of condemnation. But be joined to me, the one new man. For my yoke is easy. It's the Greek word krestos. Same word used in Romans 2, 4. It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Christos. Romans 11. Continue in his goodness. Christos. The anointing. This goodness, this yoke of goodness is the inheritance, the inheritance that is found in the finished work of Christ. That is the goodness of the Father's house. It's the inheritance of the sons that is found in the finished work of Christ. And this is what he's saying. Take this yoke upon you. Come into the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Come into the law of faith. The law of the overcomer. For my yoke is goodness. It's your inheritance that's found in the finished work. As David said in Psalm 31, verse 19, How great is your goodness! Our inheritance found in the finished work. How great is your goodness which you have laid up. See, it's an inheritance. Which you have laid up for those that fear you. Which you have wrought. Which you have worked. It's his work. Which you have wrought for those that trust in you. It's by faith we enter in. You shall hide them in the secret of your face. From the pride of man coming out of that religious pride of something that we did. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of your face from the pride of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues, the lie, the lie of the enemy. No, come into the truth of the one new man. You see, the truth is, is, is coming out of this individualistic thinking and coming into the one new man. That's the bigger picture of the truth. The truth which is in Jesus. Put on the one new man. Who is he? He's a multi-membered body. For my yoke is goodness, and my burden is light. To bring all into this. Be joined to me in this priesthood. 
come into this law, there being a change of the priesthood, there's also a necessity of the change of the law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the carnal mind, that's that individualistic thinking. For the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. Because the law of God is this picture of I am. Of him and through him and to him are all things. A carnal mind believes in this individualistic, self-focused belief. The mind of Christ is servant to all. The mind of Christ is servant to all. As Jesus said in regards to John the Baptist, of those born of women, there is none greater that is risen of John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. He's speaking of himself because he's servant to all. That's the mind of Christ. He that is least in the kingdom shall be greatest. Gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, resting in this finished work. We see it again in Psalm 16, where David says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Whenever David says, Preserve me, he's talking about mercy and truth. As Psalm 61, verse 7 says, O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which shall preserve me. What's that? It's the law of the Melchizedek priesthood. It's the bread and the wine. It's the one body, the one blood of the one new man, of the new creation. As he broke the bread into multiple pieces, that we would all come into one. The Melchizedek priesthood brought forth to Abraham bread and wine. The blood, the redemption, to pay the price, to put away the old, and to enter into the bread, the truth of the one new man. Come out of self. Come into the new. Come face to face with Yahweh. Come face to face with all his creation. Come into the revelation of this love that passes knowledge. Come to face to face to Yahweh is to come face to face with all of his creation. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those that hate you. Pray for those that spitefully use you and persecute you. Because they were all part of I am. And the Melchizedek priesthood has the perspective to bring all things back into him. Give him the reward of his suffering. Back to Psalm 16. Whoa. Psalm 16, Psalm of David. Preserve me, O God. He's talking about mercy and truth. 
Psalm 89 verse 14 says, mercy and truth shall go before your face. Mercy and truth brings us before his face and it brings us to this perspective of seeing all things in him, the one new man. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Preserve me in mercy and truth. Preserve me in your will. Abiding in you and you in me and the one new man. If you abide in me, in my mercy, through my forgiveness and my words, the truth abides in you. <laughs> we become one. Psalm 16, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. We're preserved in mercy and truth. The two immutable, unchangeable things of the covenant. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. For thou hast said unto Yahweh, thou my Lord, my goodness is to the saints who are in the earth the inheritance of my finished work through the cross. My goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another. The drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take their names into my lips. The Lord is my inheritance. This goodness of our inheritance through the finished work of Christ is what this goodness is that David speaks of in Psalm 27. I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And to David was granted a vision of the cross. David heard the Lord Jesus speak to the Father. He heard him say, my goodness, for you have said unto Yahweh, thou, my Lord, my goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another. The drink offerings of blood will I not offer. The Lord is my inheritance and my cup. The blood that redeemed me back. Thou maintainest my lot, my inheritance. The lines, the allotting lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage, inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before my face. Acts chapter 2 makes it very clear what he's talking about. He's talking about the cross. I have set the Lord always before my face, the work of the cross. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved off of this rock of the finished work of Christ on which I stand. He set my feet upon a rock, faith in the finished work, and established my goings. He's put a new song in my mouth. Those are the 144,000 on Mount Zion. Holy Spirit, quicken our hearts, our minds to this revelation. May we get the revelation of the one new man. That of you and through you and to you are all things. To come face to face with you is to come face to face with all of your creation that you love, that you laid your life down for. And from the rising of the sun, that morning sacrifice, to the going down of the same, the evening sacrifice, 
the name of Yahweh is to be praised. That we may give you the reward of your suffering. You're seated at the right hand, waiting until the restoration of all things. I decree this revelation coming forth in Jesus' name into the hearts of your people, into the hearts of your remnant, into the hearts of the 144,000, that we may be one, one unified under the head, Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine. We'd all come to the unity, the oneness of the faith, and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All right, I'm just going to go to a couple more places here. Jesus said, come unto me, all oh, here we're heavy laden, who, are, who labor and heavy laden. Come out, change the priesthood, there's a necessity to change the law. Come under this yoke of this goodness, of your inheritance in the finished work in the Father's house. Walk with me. My yoke is goodness, my burden is light. As Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 says, If any of you see one overtaken a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. To you has been committed the ministry of reconciliation. If any man in Christ, he is a new creation. He is, is not there. If any man is in Christ, a new creation. The old is past. Behold, the new. To us has been committed this ministry of reconciliation. To restore all things. I want to jump to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I, Paul, the prisoner, Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling, the same calling, come unto me. Come out of the old, come into the new. Walk worthy of the calling by which you are called, with all lowliness and meekness. Jesus said, come unto me, all who are, I am meek and lowly in heart. Same call with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity, the oneness of the Spirit, and the bond of peace. peace. One body, one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of his calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us who is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. What measure? Is he talking about Ephesians chapter 3? To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, the breadth, the length, the depth, the height. That's the measure. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. He brought us out of captivity translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He that ascended also descended into the lowest parts of the earth, and he that descended ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. 
And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the oneness of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You cannot come face to face with Yahweh without coming face to face with his whole creation and seeing him in it. Putting his face on your worst enemy. Laying down your life to reconcile them. Father, I thank you for doing a quick work in your people. As you say, you will hasten it in your time. A little one shall become a thousand, a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. That the hearts of your people may enlarged, be enlarged. As Isaiah 60 says, your hearts shall fear and be enlarged. For the abundance of the sea shall be converted into thee. The forces of the Gentiles and nations shall come unto thee. The, the multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they of Sheba shall come with their gold and their incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebioth shall minister unto thee, and they shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. What is that acceptance? The image of the sun restored back. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud? <laughs> and as the doves to their windows. Holy Spirit, I thank you for quickening the minds of your people. That we may come into the revelation of the one new man. In Jesus' name, amen.